Fala, meu povo! Tudo bom com vocês? Na última semana estreou no catálogo da Netflix a série Os Irregulares de Baker Street. E a gente ama um Sherlock Holmes, a gente ama um Dr. Watson, a gente ama todo esse universo de investigação, ainda mais numa Londres meio vitoriana, com criaturas sobrenaturais, muita neblina, muita fumaça e muita assombração, mas muita investigação e muito crime bizarro também. A gente gosta dessa combinação. Se você, por acaso, já assistiu a série Sherlock Holmes, ou então a série Penny Dreadful, ou se curtiu Enola Holmes, que foi uma outra pegada do universo de Sherlock Holmes, eu tenho certeza que você vai amar os irregulares de Baker Street. E eu pedi para Netflix para a gente bater um papo com o showrunner da série. Eu já estava enchendo o saco deles há muito tempo, porque eu queria muito conversar com esse showrunner, porque eu achei a série sensacional. E o showrunner, que é o Tom Bidwell, para quem não conhece, também é showrunner da série My Mad Fat Diary. Vocês lembram dessa série? Eu amo essa série de paixão. Eu acho que nesse momento ela não está em streaming nenhum, mas já vou deixar aqui a dica para dona Netflix colocar no catálogo também, porque é maravilhosa essa série, super incrível sobre saúde mental, recomendo super. Enfim, o Tom, ele aceitou bater um papo com a gente, infelizmente no dia que estava marcado, eu não pude participar dessa conversa, mas a Paula, maravilhosa, que trabalha com a gente, bateu um super papo, especulou ali algumas coisas bem legais para uma possível segunda temporada, vai que a Netflix renova e a gente é agraciado por mais histórias desse universo incrível do Sherlock Holmes. Então assiste aí o bate-papo da Paula com o Tom. Obrigada, Paula. Obrigada, Tom. Obrigada, Netflix. Eu espero que vocês amem tanto quanto eu amei. Comenta aí o que vocês acharam de Os Irregulares de Baker Street. E lembre-se, nos próximos dias teremos vídeo aqui no canal comentando o que a gente achou da primeira temporada. Beijo, curte aí e até a próxima. Hi Tom, nice to meet you. First, I would like to thank you for for your time here to to talk to me. No, um, no, it's my pleasure. Honestly, thank you for having me. I've seen the show, and as a huge um, fan of the Sherlock Holmes stories, it's amazing. It's another point of view that we've never seen before. So, my first question is about this: um, Why did you decide to talk about? that point of view because we have some other point of views like from Sherlock's even from like Enola Holmes but why did you decide to talk about this kind of story so I first came across the regulars um when I was reading you know I'm a big fan of Sherlock Holmes stories of course and I saw them in there and I thought wow they'd make a great series and I didn't think anything, anything of it for a few years but then I started reading Arthur Conan Doyle's other works his ghost stories horror stories and he's a terrific uh, ghost story writer I thought, oh, this is really interesting. I wonder. So I started looking more at Arthur Conan Doyle's life. And he was a big spiritualist and he was into mediumship and he was into fairies and, and spiritualism. And I, remember, I was thinking, what? I can't believe this guy who was, you know, really invested in phenomena wrote this detective who's very straight and very rational. And that, that's kind of the whole, you know, it's his genius is that he can he can pick out the rational and he can kind of follow it along to a, you know, and, and solve cases. So I thought, well, what if... I start to combine these two characters really. So what you're seeing in the show is not necessarily just Sherlock, you're seeing Arthur Conan Doyle as well. And um, so the, the timeline of Sherlock in the show, it starts relatively close to what you might expect of the detective, but then something happens. This phenomenology enters his life. And when by the time we start to see him on screen in the series, he's just completely not what you expect. Um, so that was really the thinking behind how we developed uh, Sherlock's character for the show. And not just Sherlock's character, but the the whole show, the whole tone of the show and the world that the show um, inhabits. Yeah, like for me, it was one of my favorite parts to see these new new Sherlock Holmes that mm. people maybe haven't seen before, like addict with yeah. defects. My business partner and I have been watching you from our apartment on Baker Street. Your sister has a gift. She can see things normal people cannot. That's the doctor's name. John. John Watson. 
He knows much more than what he's telling us. Some strange things have been happening recently. 221B Baker Street. Sherlock Holmes. What do you think happened to him? Sherlock Holmes doesn't exist anymore. The show gives us this obsession um, from John Watson that many people have already like theorized about it during time, um, but never like a confirmation about it. Did you create this more about the romantic field or maybe the, the fear that Watson has on being alone, like without Sherlock in the world? I think that's, I think that's really a really good question because actually it, there is, I think there is a romantic aspect to it, but I do feel like, as, as a lot of times with, with romance and infatuation particularly, it's not just about that. There's dependency there and it's, it's an addiction. Like Sherlock's an, an addict in the show. Watson is addicted as well and he's addicted to the brilliance of Sherlock Holmes. So even though, yes, it, it, might, be, it might be based in romance and it might, you might love him in that way, but it, it is, it's more than that. And I think that's what you should always be looking for when you're writing character dynamics. It's, it's not just one thing, it's multiple things because in every relationship there's, there's multiple things going on, there's multiple dynamics. Uh, and we wanted the show, with our show to be like that, you know, I wonder what he actually feels. And I wonder, I wonder what the past is, I wonder what's gone before and that's created this, you know, free zone between them. Um, now it's, it's a particular question that I have about Spike. Can maybe if there is a season two, are you going to explore more about his past, about his stories? Because we've seen the past of the others and not, not much about him. And for me, he's such an interesting character. Yeah, yeah, we do have plans to do that. Yeah. Um, the, the thing is, in the end, it was we, we've got so many characters and so it's a really busy show, as you can tell from watching it. It's, it's, it's very fast paced and we try and get as much stuff in as possible. And we do we did have plans to spike in season one, but it did the scripts. We didn't want to do it and not give it the space it needed. Um, so we kind of we thought, OK, well, we'll, we'll pull back on that a little bit and wait for, for future seasons to to look into that so yes to answer your question we do have spike coming into the his past and what's happened to him coming in so my last question would be about the the possibility of season two you plan to continue with the the supernatural um, but maybe a bit more of the this sherlock kind of of, of series like with the clues and mysteries not only supernatural but real stuff what, what are you planning for season two I think, you know, in terms of format, we want, we want it to feel, obviously, like you're watching, it's new stories, it's new adventures for the guys, but we don't want to change so much that it feels like you're watching a completely different show. So there's always that balance to strike. I think you you want to give fans of fans because they they enjoy what they've seen. You know, I don't want to do a complete gear change and then you watch it and you go, what? <laughs> I've seen shows that have done it and I've gone, no, please go back to what it was, you know. So we, although we do want to, you know, we want to protect the format. We love doing the Monsters a Week story that, you know, it's so much fun. And then our kind of format is as they go along, you know, it becomes more serial heavy and you get more of the kind of bigger stories playing in as it goes along. And that's, you know, that's the challenge of the show. So we're, st we're going to stick to that really, I think, and um, hopefully surprise people with the content of that rather than surprise people with by trying to play too much with the form of it, you know. Once again, um, I would like to thank you for your time, for your answers, and congratulate you for the show. Like It's one of my favorites so far, because I love Sherlock Holmes, and I think you've yeah. created something original and incredible. So thank you so much. Again. That's very, very kind of you. Thank you. And thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you very much. There's a new world coming. Someone has opened a rip. Barrier between our world and the next. What the actual? It's coming back. Run, run. You can People are getting strange powers. The demon walks amongst us. So long as we can fight, we fight. So if we don't find the rip and close it, we're doomed. He's the key to all of this. And I'm going to prove it and end it. I don't want this. Jesse! Ah! This is just the beginning. There's a new world.